you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Compassion. Rich and aware. Dynamic. Love. And tries to meet the needs of the most vulnerable in various ways. Interconnected. Compassionate. Kind, accepting, and together. Dynamic. I think it would like to be a beloved community. Why do you think Martin Luther King's birthday is a national day of service? I think it's really fitting that, that Martin Luther King's birthday would be a national day of service. Because that's what that man dedicated his life towards and the fact that he inspired so many people. I think his dream of, of at the time in, in the 1960s is, was just as, as relevant today as it was, as it was in the 1960s uh, because we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. Martin Luther King was an extraordinary man that transformed the American culture. I don't think he knew what an enormous impact that the work he was doing at the time uh, was going to change society. I think he could have made a great deal of money and had a great deal of influence as a charismatic, eloquent, um, African-American preacher and instead he devoted his time and energy to a, a larger cause. I think his vision was for everyone to live in harmony, for everyone to help one another and be concerned about one another. I was around for all of his speeches and his demise and all of my friends, uh, whatever color they were at my age, they were all interested in what he had to say. And he left a very good legacy. Do you think his dreams are relevant today? Absolutely. I think his dreams are extremely relevant today. Um, the economic crisis that our country is facing is absolutely um, an echo and a reflection of things that were happening in the 60s. Um, you know, as I, I work for the Head Start program, we came right out of the movement of um, the poor people's movement in the 60s. Poverty still exists. Um, and as long as poverty exists, I think that his work will continue to be relevant. I think right now we're going through a huge transition um, in our culture, economically, socially, environmentally. And just like the civil rights movement, you need um, a bridge of ideology to go from the old way to the new way and so right now I think that what Martin Luther King taught us and was a leader for is very relevant in how we deal with each other with the economic crisis of today with people losing jobs and people losing their homes there's a lot of people can either respond with fear and aggression and anger or they can respond with compassion for themselves compassion for other people and so using Martin Luther King's words, his speeches for the Civil Rights Movement, addressing what's going on today is super, re super relevant and super important. And he's just, he's a, he's a role model. Martin Luther King was a strong leader. He was serving not only his, his uh, people, but I think the entire world with his actions. And it would seem uh, relevant that all of us recognize that we need to do service uh, in our community, whether that's uh, a local community, regional, national, global, and that's our, um, that's our responsibility.
When Grey Wolf first started, I think there were a lot of concerns in the community about what it meant for the community to bring a bunch of young recovering drug addicts and alcoholics into Port Townsend's backyard, and the concerns were legitimate. Over time, I think people have a much better understanding of what we're doing here and that part of uh, individuals getting sober happens in community. Uh, and that part of our mission is to work with people in Port Townsend and to give back to the community. And so one of the things I appreciate more now than ever is that one of the most important things that makes Grey Wolf Ranch work is Port Townsend. Our guys are available to volunteer, they're available for hire. We've had some of our young men apprentice at the Maritime Center, um, the uh, Port Townsend Airplane Museum, uh, any number of uh, um, partnerships with local community organizations. We have smart, resourceful, educated, uh, really good guys who have been held hostage by an illness. And so giving back to the community helps them realize that and everybody benefits, including the residents here. What was it like meeting George Dawson? Well, initially when I read about his life, I read about a man who started school at the age of 98 for the very first day in his life and then learned how to read and write and by the age of 101, three years later, he's reading at a fifth grade reading level. So I was interested in a man that could learn to read so quickly. A reporter had asked him, do you think that a black man will ever be president? And George Dawson, this was in 2001, I think, or so. And he says, I don't ever see that happening. But it's hard to realize that when he was saying that in 2002, nobody white or black really, there wasn't one person that disagreed with him. In either his community or any other racial community disagreed that it's not likely. And he did say, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, which was true, but he barely missed it. <laughs> I'm here with Habitat trying to basically help fight poverty. And that includes everything from homelessness to resources to financial information. Um, Again, it's, it's a hand, hand up, not a hand out. I just heard that there was a 9.3% unemployment rate in, in uh, Jefferson County. The underemployed, which are people not making enough money, uh, pretty much doubles that up to almost 16%. So around here, it's very relevant. Uh, getting everybody into into feeling like a community, being being all together, being one set, not um, not sectioned out, not certain cliques, not um, I mean, it's it's everybody becoming one into a community, and that was that was MLK's dream, and that's what that's what the the sixteenth is here for is for us not only as this small community but for as um, Washington State as a community, for the United States as a community. Um, it's not just one little small section. My name is Karen Jogerst and I work in the Olympic Community Action Programs. Our primary emphasis is to help people um, with low-income housing. We also have partnerships with other um, agencies and we work with uh, we work with a lot of different people. Lots going on here, there's lots of volunteer opportunities. Um, we have students here from the high schools, we have um, mentally challenged folks here, um, we have seniors here, we have uh, just a wide variety of people um, giving back to the community. Our agencies have good relationships with you that with each other. This community is very respectful. I think Port Townsend as a community is, is, is a wonderful community. We have a, um, the community here is very supportive of the thrift store, very supportive of our agency and our efforts to help. We're just doing good things here. So if you want to do something good in your community, I hope you'll join us. The Boiler Room contributes to our community and the role that the Boiler Room plays in our service community is broad and it's expansive. It's, it, we, we do a lot of different things. Um, not only we, are we available for young people to have a place where they can participate in, in the community with other members of the community that are doing service oriented things, um, but they can decide for themselves what they want to do, what, what service is best uh, 
you know, what, what need they can fill as young people, um, which is, I think, tremendously important. And I believe also that uh, the Boiler Room in the community functions as a place not just for young people, but for people of all ages to participate in that same process of, of encouraging and building community with each other actively, rather than just saying, you know, someone should do something about this. Well, you know, turns out your name's someone. Seeing a need within your community and taking care of it right away is something that's important. Not just saying, oh, that poor person. You know what I mean? Being able to do more than just pity someone, being able to empathize with someone, and being able to um, give that person respect, and being able to treat people with dignity in a sense that, you know, they, you know, are worthy of your help, and you are worthy of someone else's help, and we are all worthy of each other's. Um, beneficial behavior, as you would say. I was recently in Atlanta for this certification course as an instructor, black instructor, and in Atlanta they have a Martin Luther King Center. When I was there, it really made me think about Martin Luther King as the person. He was consistently a lot about human connection, and um, in order for us to be connected, we can't be at war, we can't be at, you know, be adversaries. Well, the mission of the Recyclery is to promote positive social change through bicycles, creating opportunities for young, young people and old people and people of all walks of life to really connect through a bicycle, by working on a bicycle, by learning how to work. This community responds to what you try to create. I guess I would like to say that I think to build a really strong community, starting with the youngest members uh, and then working up, you know, teaching them community when they're little really might provide the change that a lot of people are looking for. But it would have to be, and this is a great uh, description of community, would be to have like the whole school system on the same page. Let's raise a bunch of community aware children. Let's start when they're in preschool and let's get them involved so that all of those kids who graduate high school someday have always been given this message that let's get back to our community, let's get involved, let's clean the park and, and help the old lady who needs something. I think Working Image is a great example of how uh, our community supports uh, a beloved community. A beloved community cares about people in need. Uh, they care about lifting people up when they're down. Working Image does that. We give them clothes and that then gives a sense of self-confidence and we, we're, we're thrilled to be part of that. I notice that we have a lot of individuals who aren't involved with any kind of agency just come forward and offer help and it's, um, it, it really does humble me. People who just hear about us and come and, and help where they can. I see it all the time. This is 2012, and each year I believe we can become bigger and better and more loving and remember everything that Dr. Martin Luther King stood for. What a beautiful symbol for us to walk in his footsteps, and that's what we hope for 2012.